Who can remind us what we've been talking about, the central theme? There should be a word that we can chorus. We are talking about the spirits, isn't it? Since the beginning of the year or late last year, we've been talking about spiritual things. Been shedding light according to God's inspiration on the broad subject spirits, the Holy Spirit and his empowerment, how our lives are made to be engrafted with divine nature. In other words, how we can live above the elements of this world. When you live an ordinary life as a Christian, then there's nothing different in you other than you're just going to church. But what should make a difference in our lives is our ability to live above nature, above corruption, above the elements of this world. And that's what we've been capturing in all that we've been sharing and the center around the person of the Holy Spirit. And when we put all these things to practice, you discover that you begin to enjoy what is, what is called hypostatic union. Your very gene is supplanted, and a new gene in the Spirit of God will be flowing in you. It is not that you will not be having some manifestation of weaknesses like any other person. But the manifestation of the supernatural power of God will be revealed through you. And that's why somewhere in the Bible, the, the word of God said, Elijah was a man like us. Elisha was a man of passion like us. A man that will go hungry, a man that will be angry, a man that will be disappointed and will feel it. But the Bible says they did exploits. You, you, we all know the weaknesses or the major weakness of David as a man. But was he not supernatural? He had a high dose of hypostatic union. It appeared he was not living like a normal human being. So we can do today when we practice the principles. But the most important thing is knowledge, to have the knowledge. When you have the knowledge, then you are able to apply the rudiments, the principles of the knowledge, then it automatic, automatically works for you. So what is important is not just us hearing the word but putting it into what action action is very very important I remember I spoke to somebody today and while praying God gave a message and the person said oh pastor last year you gave me the same message I said that means you have not practiced it that means you have not acted on it. When God is repeating the same thing, it means you have not done what? You have not acted. It means you are still faltering. If not, God is not a man that will keep on repeating, repeating, repeating. But if he's, if he's repeating it, it means you are not actioning it. When we put action into it, it works. Hallelujah. So, we still centering our teaching on the Holy Spirit until we are saturated enough to be able to live the kind of life that God desires that we live. And so tonight, we'll be sharing on the title, The Holy Spirit and Your Prayers. The Holy Spirit and your what? And your prayers. We have to understand what role the Holy Spirit play? What role he plays in our prayers? Now, when we don't understand the role he plays, 
we are likely to feel that our prayers are not answered. We are likely to apply our ordinary reasoning to our prayers, which will make it worthless. Our prayers are worth them. Our prayers are effective to the level to which we are aware that the Holy Spirit has his role to play. Hallelujah. Are you with me this evening? Are we on the same page? Jude, verse 20. Jude chapter 1, it has only one chapter. Verse 20. It says, But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, Praying in the what? In the Holy Spirit. Building yourself, developing yourself, making yourself to mature in faith. Gaining maturity and experiencing the things of the Spirit, you build yourself up from one level to what? to another in other words your level last year should be different from your level this year and one of the most effective ways to do it is praying in what the Holy Spirit I love the way New Living Translation NLT puts it it says praying in the power of the Holy Spirit it means the Holy Spirit energizes your prayer to get effective response from heaven. In other words, your prayers do not get enough effects without the partnership, without the backing of who? Of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit makes it effective. And the person of the Holy Spirit has his own medium, which you call tongues. And what are these tongues? The tongues constitute a spiritual language spoken in heaven by the angels. There may be variation in expression but they convey the same meaning in the spirit. So that's what the Bible is saying, that you build yourself up to maturity by praying in the Holy Spirit. There's a, 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 a more effect that is brought to bear by speaking the language of the angels, a language spoken in heaven. It is a language that is devoid of, of human limitations. It's a language, it's a medium that is devoid of the corruption of this life. So it is flawless and has the capacity to attract the right attention from heaven. So it is an effective medium to communicate spiritually with heaven. Now, and I'm going to be showing us uh, some truth about this thing. Without speaking in tongues, your prayers are answered. Are you with me? The Bible says, even your very thoughts the Bible tells us somewhere in Ephesians chapter, is it 3, verse 20? That to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think. Just think, oh God, I know you can help me. Then is registered in heaven. Your thoughts are registered. And God has the capacity to get your thoughts and respond to it. 
to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we think or ask according to the power that works in us that the more you, you must be a spirit being and not just an ordinary person when you are empowered and the spirit of god superimposes the spirit on you then that is the power that works in you you are connected it's just like your sim in your in your in your phone gets you connected to a particular network are you with me the same thing the holy spirit in you gets you connected to heaven and that's why the bible says the power that works in us so don't get it wrong without speaking in tongues your prayers can be what answered but more efficacy more power is brought to bear when speaking tongues hallelujah i don't know if i'm communicating because i don't want us to be confused and that's why i'm going to be analyzing some information so that you know our minds are made straight first corinthians chapter 14 if you read from verse 2 to 4 then we also read from verse 13 to 18 we'll get some vital information from this portion yes yeah, thank you he said for he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men but to who to god in other words you are not even speaking to yourself you may not even hear what you're saying other than you are uttering some things but you are directly communicating with who with god with heavens for no one understands him no one will understand you that does not mean that your tongues cannot be interpreted we are going to be coming to gifts later that does not mean it cannot be interpret interpreted but the capacity to, to interpret comes from god so the interpretation is of who is of god not man so, for no one understands him, however, in the spirits, he speaks mysteries. What are mysteries? Things that are covered. Things that are deep. In other words, when you are speaking in tongues, you may be speaking the secret things of your lives, the glorious things about your life. You may be speaking them out of hiding into prominence. And that language has the effective power to bring it from where it is being hidden to life. Mystery is a hidden thing. Mystery is occultic. You can't be in a relationship with God without appearing like somebody who is occultic. Now, the word the occultic is misused. How is occultic? It's not a negative thing. It just shows that you are mysterious. There are things happening around you that passes understanding. There are things that are so covered up that ordinary person will not understand and they give it name. Whether it's in light or in darkness, occultism is occultism. I hope you understand. It is a misuse of word when you say, oh, the person is occultic. That means the person is mysterious, is practicing mysterious things. Every true Christian is mysterious because there are things that are hidden concerning us. If they know everything about me, they will have killed me. I'm mysterious. I'm occultic. I am brought into occultism by the blood of the lamb just like you do it in, in, in they make ritual in darkness occultism without the mysterious nature of God in you then you are not mysterious you are not 
you are not, if they understand everything about you, if people can understand everything about you, just from their mind, then you are ordinary. But you are made mysterious by the spiritual things in your life. You are occultic. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But he who prophesies speaks edification, comfort, lifting, and exhortation and comfort to who? To men. When you speak in tongues, you edify yourself. You speak mysterious things into life. But when you prophesy, you make certain things that are hidden to be known. You bring them to the level of openness. He who speaks in a tongue edifies who? Himself. Is polishing himself. Is gratifying himself. Is developing himself. Is making himself to mature. Is bringing himself up. But he who prophesies edifies you, the church, helping the church. How am I communicating this evening? From verse 13 to 18. Therefore, let him who speaks in a tongue pray that he may do what? He may interpret. It means you have to go from one level to another. Now, you, you know the advantage when you can interpret so that you know what you're saying. The danger in tongues is you may be speaking the language of the devil. Just like we have the language of, of heaven, we have the language of hell. And they're both in tongues. And when you don't know what you're saying, at times and you, you are possessed you may not know that you are cursing yourself a lady has said i said what are you speaking in tongues he said i'm saying it's going to be destroyed it's not going to be where we have and so on and so forth but if you lack understanding how how will you know i've been to churches and pastors will tell me i say hey this brother this sister is fire brand and i've said there's no fire this is that's in hell. Was it last year or two years ago we, they invited us to a church around Stadium Road? And they pointed to a sister and said, ah, This sister is. You know. And I said, No, 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 no. When he came to the program in the night, the sister was screaming. There's a lady who called herself a prophetess in Lagos and she would speak in tongues and prophesy. But when she came to our church in Lagos, I said, hey, this is Satan himself. And I said, fire. He said, hey, I'm Lucifer. I said, oh, so you use her to prophesy. He said, yes. So your ability must graduate from ordinary speaking to interpretation and identifying the true nature of the tongue you are speaking. Hallelujah. I, I hope we are communicating this evening. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit does what? Prays. When you're praying in your knowledge, your body prays, your, you understand what you're saying, but what you're praying in spirit, your spirit prays. But my understanding is what? Is unfruitful. What is the conclusion then? In other words, how do we solve this problem? I will pray with the what? Spirits. And I will also pray with what? Understand, you combine the two. Speak. I will sing with the Spirit. And I will also sing with understanding. When you speak, you see, when you get to a level and you're speaking, you, you are speaking in tongues and you change it to singing. Oh, you find it difficult to stop. And that's how you can pray for five hours non-stop. And you know, you get tired, 
because you cannot communicate in the language of heaven because you will soon get tired that's why my old church my parents church, they say god do it do it do it she 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 do it do it when the tongue does not come in you will repeat and i will negate the bible in matthew chapter 6 verse 7 matthew 6 7 jesus taught us that we must avoid vain repetitions let's go back for for you indeed give thanks well but the other is not what edified because he does not understand it verse 18 the last verse i thank my god paul says so i thank my god i speak with tongues more than you all and it was effective in the spirit in his ministry that means we must imitate him and speak in tongues more but we must be sure that our tongues are not vitated with corruption of the kingdom of hell that is the danger when you look at first corinthians chapter 2 from verse 9 to 13 let's see what the bible is saying there first corinthians chapter 2 from verse 9 the bible says it is written i has not seen nor ear heard nor has it entered into the heart of man the things which god has prepared for those who love him yes but god has revealed them to us through who through his spirit for the spirit searches how many things all things yes the three things of god now if the spirit searches then the language of the spirit will accompany the spirit to search because the mode of communication the medium is part of the person of the spirit i hope i'm communicating when you are going when you are going to russia to do business i want to go and search something can you search effectively without the medium of the language of the russians if you understand it peripherally if you understand it on the surface then they can cheat you but if you understand it deeply then they can cheat you they will say oh, this is part of us the same thing in the spirit what is revealed in the spirit is captured by the language of the spirit he said for what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him even so no one knows the things of god except the spirit of who of god hey now we have received not the spirit of the world but the spirit is who is from god that we might know the things that are being freely given to us things have been given to us but look at verse 13 it said these things we also speak these things that are given they are hidden they are mysterious things they are covered they're concealed And the way to un unearth them is to gain access to them by the person of the Holy Spirit using he, the medium of language of the Spirit. These things we also speak not in words. Which man's wisdom does what? Teaches. But with the Holy Spirit teaches. When he says these things we also speak, he's speaking about esoteric language, Kabbalistic language, esoteric language. It means something that is covered, concealed, but understood and revealed to a very enlightened inner circle. 
limited number of people. That's why you can't but talk about occultism. Has it's mysterious. It's not for everybody. That's why when you see people who are deep in the spirit, they, they do things as if they are not part of this world. They are, they are strangers. You can't understand them. It's like these things we speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches. Not your bad language that you teach in university. Not English, not French. That is taught by professors, but by the language that is taught in who? In heaven. Comparing spiritual things with what? With spiritual. Some people, when they speak, they look at everything from where? Spiritual perspective, because that is the origin of everything in life. When you are not there, you complain that, ah, it's always spiritual, it's always spiritual. It's because <laughs> it's esoteric, it's occultic, it's mysterious, and it sees things from the perspective of the spirit. Everything from the spirit. At that time, the, 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 the nature has changed. The gene that I came to the world with is gra gradually being depressed. And the gene of the spirits is welling up in him. And he gains more of the nature of God, divine nature. Hallelujah. Are we on the same page? You must have experienced it like anybody else. You want to pray for two, three hours. After praising God, asking for forgiveness of sins and all the rest of them, even when you have 1,000 prayer points, you find yourself repeating yourself. The way to overcome is to lace, to lace your prayer with speaking in tongues. And you discover that there's no time wasting. You're not going to repeat yourself. And the Holy Spirit takes charge of the way you pray. And that's what the Bible is saying in Romans chapter 8 from verse 26 to 28. Romans chapter 8. From 26 to 28. It says, likewise, the Spirit also helps in our works, in our weaknesses, any time, any area in which you are weak. Who helps? The Holy Spirit. He comes as a helper. You remember he's a helper. He helps in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for. As we ought, as we should. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings. We cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is. Because he makes intercession for the saints according to who? To the will of God. So not according to your will. Your will is corruption. But his will is perfection. So he makes everything to fall in line with the will of God. And everything will work well. Because if you follow your way, it may appear good initially, but... Hey, the end is bad. So it makes you to fall in line. And you are praying in line with his will. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are we together? Oh, please. 
Let's read this in a message translation. You capture what I'm saying properly. Message translation, Romans 8 from 26. Quickly, can we get it? Meanwhile, the moment we get tired in the waiting, at times you are praying, you say, hey, nothing is happening. God's spirit is right alongside helping us along. If we don't know how or what to pray, it doesn't matter. He does our prayer in and for us, making prayer out of our wordless signs and aching groans. Mm. Ah. Those ones are transmitted to prayers by his spirit. In other words, you may just be somewhere and you pray. Ah. Mm. Ah. Oh God. What you're doing is you are praying. The Holy Spirit is changing those sides and groanings, communicating with heavens. Are we on the same page? He knows us far better than we know ourselves. Knows our pregnant condition, situations, and circumstances. That day, hey, Erutimo, way is too heavy. My body is too heavy. He knows. The spirit knows. So he communicates the pregnancy to heaven and says, Hey, we must relieve this woman of this pregnancy. And keeps us presence before God so that you don't go away. He reconditions you. That's what it means. Then even with the bodies, you get refreshed and say, hey, I know my God lives. Because you are tuned with the Spirit. If not, when you are swept off your feet by challenges, by situations, then you go astray and you go further from God. The hell will be inviting you quickly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why we can't be so sure that every detail in our lives of love for God is worked into something good. Hallelujah. Let me give you an example or two examples. Personal. You see, when you're a believer, you are going through some challenges. God is teaching you some lessons you don't know. I've told you several times about when I got three jobs. And God said, go to the worst one. Which ordinarily, I wouldn't have opted for. Which was stupid to choose, foolish, utter nonsensical. But God said, this is where you should go. Then I entered, they treated me like an orphan, like a beggar. Now, I was given responsibility to submit weekly report of my division to the office of, of the MD. The first week I took it there, I gave it to the secretary. And the second says, hey, is it for the MD? Okay, drop it. So I didn't understand. So I now told one of my colleagues that this is the way the secretary responded. They say, ah, she was trying to help you. That chief, so, 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 that he loved people coming to bow and to worship him, that what the secretary was trying to suggest is you would have taken in it in to use that opportunity to rub his head go and make him feel good and so that one day he would just call you and say, oh yeah, promote him. So when I was told, I said, that is not my nature. I have never done that and I will never. I prefer to lose, lose the promotion. So I was taking it there. The secretary was, <laughs> okay, drop it. But people who had opportunity to drop, to take any report there or anything there, 
they will say, no, I want to drop with it. Then, then you sit down. Then, you recall to, when you drop it, they say, once you come in, you just go down and say, morning, sir. Ah, ah. Thank you, sir. In fact, you are the greatest person. Then he will drop it on the center table. Then they said you should go to his leg and just hold his leg. I said, I cannot do this thing. Either in the hidden or in the open. Let me do my job. And they should assess me on the basis or the merit of my job. Not on the way I respect anybody. So, after some time, I was moved to Kano. And people came to me and said, ah, if you have done that right thing, this man will never, never, never. You have missed a lifelong opportunity. And they made me to feel bad. They said, even if you go to him now, it's too late. I was confused. What should I do? I said, God, I don't know prayer points. I don't know how to pray. Is it God, take me back to Lagos? Or God, which prayer points should I take? So I started to pray in tongues. Every time, God, you know better. I started to pray in tongues. After three months in Kano, the MD was walking in his sitting room and moving to bed. He collapsed and died. If I mention his name, you know, because Sonia Day and all these musicians, they prayed about him. He died. The Englishman that took over sacked everybody that was going to him to hold his leg. We had over 3,000 staff. We were left with about 950. Every, if you had a remote, if, you've, if you had any contact direct to say you had, they sacked everybody. Including the people that said, I missed lifelong opportunity. And that is the way God arranged you see, if I was not exposed to the challenge in Kano by divine way, I wouldn't have produced the kind of result that made them to bring me back to Lagos. And without any godfather becoming an executive director in that company. I was just praying, God, I don't know what to pray. Just have your way. And God had his way. At times when you think you are losing, you don't know you are gaining. It's esoteric approach. Mysterious. Of course, I suffered initially. But my gain was much. Hallelujah. Last week for three days, I told you I didn't pray for three days. To ordinary human being, you say, ah, this man with thoughts. Because man said the truth. You remember I told you I fasted till nine o'clock and I said my prayers are answered. And my wife was angry. I said, what kind of fasting is it? And God proved that day before sunset that my prayer ascended to him. So when I didn't pray for three days, do you know what happened? This, my spirit was, oh my God. Songs that I have forgotten. My spirit was just singing. And the revelations I got within those three days, I never got them before. For those three days, I didn't pray. If I got sent me to some of you and I gave messages to some of you, those three days, I I would just be hearing music, song, praising God, praising God. For three days, I didn't sing. It means my spirit was, is attuned with heavens. The spirit makes intercession. 
even in your weakness even in your incapacitation even when you feel discouraged you don't want to pray you don't feel like praying the spirit is praying connected to your spirit so you don't need to say oh and i have to pray i make christianity real it's not a theory it is not it is not something you teach I know some people will have gone away and say, hey, without pastor, he, every night, without his, every day, hey, hey. You want me to deceive you? No. That's why I said three days. Three days. Three, no vigil, no. Yet, my spirit was touched. More than when I was praying. That is the work of who? Of the Holy Spirit. Because he knows I'm attuned. When your battle is charged and you leave the vehicle for two weeks, when you kick it, will you not respond? You check the time. The time is still working. You go to a level. You, you, this... I told you, it's not every time that I get some people, you, you, they, 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 they may slap the wife with backhand. Hey, you are not coming to pray. I said, nine o'clock we'll pray. Then the children, they will beat them, everybody. Glory be to God in the highest. And you are praying. You are joking. You are joking. You are, con you are not con everybody that is praying in this room is angry. <laughs> and you say you are praying. It's a lie. You, you, you ritual. Religion. <laughs> you know, at times we, we love deceiving ourselves most of the time. And we think we are doing the things of God the way we're supposed to. Deception. I'm not saying if you can maintain it every day, it's good. I'm not, I'm not condemning it. It's very, very good. I'm just telling you that my own is not religious. It's effective praying. And even when I'm not praying, I'm conscious that the Holy Spirit is. is my helper. In my weakness. I said, oh, I'm, I'm, I need to rest for three days. And he's praying, and he's connected to him by spirit. Pray. Oh. Hallelujah. Are we on the same page? Oh, yeah. You see, in Mark chapter 16. Mark 16, uh, verses 17 and 18. Jesus says something there, and I want us to follow through. It says, these signs shall do what? This, oh, go back to um, New King James Version, please. And these signs will follow those who do what? It means automatically. When you believe, the signs will accompany. You don't need to draw. They just pack their bags and baggages and they do what? They follow you. Those who believe in my name, they will do what? Cast out what? Demons. Now, do you see people being taught how to cast out demons? Oh, yeah. Brother, come. When you want to cast out demons, do like this. Out, out. You don't teach anybody. It is something that will accompany you as an entitlement. 
Because some people have come to me and said, Pastor, why have you not come and put us on that? I said, speaking, then I hope that your chin. I said, speaking tongues. <laughs> speaking tongues by force. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with what? New tongues. These are things that will spring up automatically. As you grow, one may appear, you may not know, and the other one will come. The thing, the problem we have is we are not confident. Excuse me. At times, we are ashamed that our friends should not hear us speaking tongues. I, I hear my, I have my brother, but he, he, he. That person is not serious. He's not a believer. And if he's your friend, cut from such friend. You need friends that will encourage you. Don't bother what anybody says. There are watchers in the church. They watch people and they make comment. When you listen to them, you will die. Me, I don't care. Who watches me, I don't care. And I don't monitor anybody. I don't. Hmm. Have I ever called somebody and said, hey, what is that, brother? Uh, no. Ask people that are very, very close to me. I should face my business and grow. People that are behind, let them stay. So don't mind the watchers that say, hey, 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 look at your sister, your friend, is speaking in tongues. So. Speak it! Is a sign that must accompany you. You don't need to beg for it. You don't need to be trained. You don't need to, 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 for somebody to push you and begin to speak. Whatever comes to your mouth, speak it. It transmitted life. He said they will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will do what? They will recover. How many times have you tried to lay hands on sick? You'll be looking for pastor. Pastor, I need Jesus' water. <laughs> when are you going to try? Are you not going to try one day? It is not the day that a child gets up that it works. He will get up and fall. Get up and walk. Eventually, the child will be walking and jumping up. Hallelujah. How are we together? Oh. So, these signs automatically they follow. They accompany. They pack their bags and follow you. Now, because of our time, there are two ways by which you get this gift to be able to speak in tongues, number one is in a fellowship like this. Because the Bible tells us in Acts chapter 2 from verse 1 to 4, the, the disciples they, they, they were gathered in one place in one accord. Why we are not getting power is we are not in one accord. This one is not speaking to this. This one is fighting this. This one is keeping malice with this. <laughs> If you clear your heart of all these nonsensical things, irrelevant things, the Holy Spirit is looking for a good abode. When you prepare and tender your heart, they were in the same place with ground accord, and there was a mighty rushing wind. And a flame came upon each. 
and they were filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and they spoke in tongues and that was the beginning of great revival speak in tongues in fellowship expect that God feel me begin to speak and speak in tongues then the second one is laying on of hands in Acts chapter 8 Acts chapter 8 verse 17 also chapter 19 verse 6 So then they lay hands on them and they receive the who? The Holy Spirit and the ability to speak in tongues. Let me tell you what to do to make it work quickly. You stir up the Spirit. That's the summary. You stir up yourself. Stir up the gifts in you. So many of us, the gifts are in us. But we need to do what? We need to stir. Stir up. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 8. Sorry. Okay, verse 6. Yeah. He said, therefore, Paul was writing to Timothy, his son in the Lord. He said, therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. I have laid hands on so many of you. Have I not? The same deposit in me have been virtually transferred into you. What do you need to do? Stir up. There is no one that I have not laid hand on. Maybe 1,000 times. So the deposit is there. What do you do? Stir up. Let me give you some relief. Just quickly, four ways to stir up. Four ways. Quickly. Number one is you have to work for God intentionally. That, hey, God, I'm serving you. I want to serve you intentionally. When you are serving intentionally, you receive insult to, hey, hey, bamboozle you with, but because you are working for God intentionally, you just look forward. You are not distracted by all those petty, petty things. You work for God. How? Intentionally. Time will not permit me. I'm just rushing. Number two, you have to share in the fellowship. You have to share in the suffering of the gospel. Sorry. That's one of the ways. You have to share in the suffering of who? Of the gospel. Do you know we don't like this thing? Even when we are insulted, hey, we, we fling it off immediately. You are not, you can't share. When people come to me and say, Pastor, if you see how that brother looked at me as if I'm nobody, <laughs> merely looking down. <that. laughs> We are too conscious of ourselves. We are too aware how important we are. We are egoistic. We are proud. You must condition yourself, bring yourself down and be ridiculed. That is an attraction of power. You see that the power will come. But if you don't enjoy this suffering, unfortunately, the power cannot flow. And that's what the Bible is saying in, in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 8. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 8. I thought we'd be there. 
Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share with me in what? In the sufferings. We are too conscious of ourselves. The Holy Spirit wants to flow through somebody who is selfless, who says, I'm nobody. Oh, insult? Oh, I receive. Without this, the power cannot flow. You are blocking the power. Hallelujah. Yeah. Then the third one, stay true to sound teaching. Sound teaching. Stay true. Be connected. Sound. I believe that any member of first chambers, true member, when you get to a place they are teaching something that is not sound, you will know. You will just know. One of us was given an award in a church. They invited the person. The person said, no, I don't need this award. But what is that word? Some people wrote to me, they said, me and my wife, we should come and take honorary PhD so that I'll be doctor. So from that time, and I've said, hey, doctor. Doctor. And I also praise God. Last Sunday, or last Saturday, I've been, I've been crowned as a pig D. Nonsense. Any day that I come to you to say I want to accept PhD or another day, just put me in a smoker. Take me to usage. Something is wrong. mean that I have PhD in the spirits. You are saying some people should give me paper. Don't call me pastor. Just call me Coyote as long as the spirit is in me. Why you don't call me? I don't care about what is pastor. Stay true to genuine teaching. Hold something. Sound teaching. You see that the Holy Spirit will walk in you. Stay up in you. And lastly, act out the word eagerly. When you hear the word, you act out how? Eagerly. You are eager. Like you have heard it now. You are eager. Hey, this is the word. Hey, see what I've heard again today. Oh, I'm going to work for it. I'm going. Then you see that the spirit of the world will be so eager too to say, hey, this is already vessel. It's not the world. Eh, okay, eh, I will start to do it. Anytime I feel, mm -hmm, be, hmm. what is before me now is, in fact, it's just more than speaking in tongues. <laughs> the Lord I'm carrying, the Lord I'm carrying now is more than speaking. If I'm speaking in tongues, let me come back to it. Ah, the Spirit of God will say, ah, this one is not ready. <laughs> when you act on it, the Spirit is aware and is sensitive. I say, hey, so this person lost me. He wants to communicate with me. When you go to a place and you find somebody who speaks your language, how do you feel? Hey, hey, where are you from? When you see each other in Nigeria, you don't care, but when you, hey, huh? that is the way the Holy Spirit will respond. You still. The hand has been laid and the gift is in you. What you need to do is to do what? Step. Step. 
and God bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah.